They had guitars in the 70s. Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno as we say Bularquo here at the Premier at Leicester Square. Don't let a man get started. I don't want no bad press, no police, no nothing. about to witness a murder. Not if we don't look right. Francis! Rick! You looked like you were having a lot of fun on this film. Yeah, we did. We genuinely, had, we had a great time. We went to Fiji for a month, uh, not knowing what to expect. I mean, you know, we're not actors per se. And, uh, you know, we, we, we played it by ear and we got through it. We had a lot of good people around us. Lovely place to be. Beautiful settings and some of the most amazing scenery I've ever seen in my life. And it was just, uh, it was a wonderful experience, and I'd really like to do it again, but let's see how this one does first, I suppose, yeah. And how, were you, how were you approached about the project? Well, uh, I don't know whether you remember, but, uh, oh, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years ago we did Coronation Street, however long ago it was, and the stunt coordinator from Coronation Street said, I'd like to do a movie with you, and we said, yeah, yeah, of course you would. So we got one script through, it was going to be shot in Bangkok, we didn't like it, turning films down now, you know. And then this, this one came through and we had a giggle and we heard it was going to be shot in Fiji, so the whole thing made sense. So. I think what's nice about this as well, we've got some new tracks and, and yeah. some, some old ones that the fans will love and it will resonate with them, won't it? Well, yeah, I see it as a project of two halves, really, because I, I really like the album, but it's a soundtrack album. And me, personally, when I was writing, I thought to myself, well, this is not Quo Live, this is Quo Screen, you know. And I read the script, and I, you know, it just made me think differently about songs. And uh, and there's some very interesting stuff on there. And for me, the albums over there, the movies over there. When you put the two together, then you get the real, you get the the whole package. Because yeah, you're having to, the, you've got to capture the energy as well. I mean, the, the particular song that really kind of uh, that I remember at the end. It's just got a great energy, and everybody's, it's just happy, isn't it? Well, it is, and everybody's written very well for this album. Francis, Rhino, Andrew. Uh, everybody's written really well for it. I think we saw it as a as a challenge, you know, let's write for a movie rather than writing for Quo. And uh, I think it's turned out, it, it's a very, a bit diverse, this album, and uh, it's really good. How much of, of it we can do on stage, I don't know. Certainly go, go, go. Who are these clowns? They're clowns. These guys are real gangsters. Bula. Rocking all over Fiji. Yeah. Looked like a lot of fun. It was fun, but hard work. I, I don't think I'm used to getting up at five in the morning and leaving at six, starting at seven and finishing at 6.30 with half an hour lunch. And we did that for three weeks and then we went into night shoots. But I learned a lot, or we both learned a lot about the whole structure of movies. It does make you look at movies differently. And in any one scene that anybody sees, there's probably 13 or 14 people around you, which I didn't realise. That kind of stuff was um, most enjoyable and it's out of our comfort zone. And, you know, I look at the camera and he says, do this, do that. And he goes, yes, good. Oh, I did good. And it's like when I was younger with my parents over at school. I did good. And you go on to the next scene. And each morning we got in the car, we try and learn our scenes and learn them with the other actors. And then we did it. It's interesting because you're obviously used to performing, obviously on stage, and obviously then performing on screen is, is a completely different experience, isn't it? Well, initially, as I said, once we got over the first scene and the director said yes, and then everybody else was kind of helping us out, and they're all experienced actors, it was just that through looking in the sheet done each day. And I'd be all confident getting back to the hotel, and then maybe in the middle of the night you start getting panicky again. Well, I'd be able to do it again. But it must have done something to us because we would like to try and do it better. Nice to talking about thrill is is the energy that the, the both of the you that you have on on screen mm. and it, you you see like there's this mischievous side of your nature are you are you both like that in real life? Yeah, I think that's what Stuart saw in it, but I think uh, we could develop it a little more because the, it was for a PG you know parent like, uh, across the board, and I think some mild expletives might have been more natural and <laughs> and maybe a tad of blood here or there because people seem to die with no blood and no marks. But it's that British humour. It's, um, as I said, we would perhaps like to try and do more. Have they seen us? Oh, I think they've seen us. They can't have gone that far. They're ancient. What? Oh, you don't know where they are. So how do you find them? People screaming, flashing blue police lights. No, uh, your, your character Simon's got his work cut out for him, hasn't Simon. he? Simon, Simon, yeah. Yeah, I have, yeah. But, um, you know, they're, 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 you know, they're, they're rascally 
pop stars running around Fiji causing havoc. But um, two of the nicest human beings I've ever met, and I mean that, seriously. No egos, never took themselves seriously, jumped in and worked with everybody and, and, and made everybody in Fiji feel very, very special. So I'll take me out of them. And it, the, I mean the thing that. is, when you're, when you're reading a script like this as an actor, it's just such a lot of fun to have. Well, I don't usually get to do things like this. I'm not being funny. I'm usually punching someone or running. I do a little bit of that in this, but we keep it sort of tongue in cheek. But um, just a nice film. You know, it's, 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 it's like the Beatles, the Monkeys. It's a, it's, a, it's a feel good. It's just a nice little film. You know what I mean? With some new tracks for the fans. And that's what's important is their fan base. You know. It's nice to see them doing something different after all these years of being performers on stage. Really. Yeah, it is. And you know what? The funny thing is, they're both very, very, very good at what they do, especially in this. You know, I was shocked. I was like, Jesus, they could be actors. <laughs> Come on, get up. So this is your actual job? A hundred years of rescuing these two? This is going to be such a great shot for the video. As long as that's the only thing they're shooting at. Your character, when we when we first see her, she's not sold on these guys. Oh, she is not asked. She is like, who are they? Who are they? What is happening? I'm not bothered. I'm so young. They're so old. Yeah, she's not interested. And, and as it obviously as the the film kind of has its arc, she actually does warm to them. What was it? Do you think that she, that that won the, her round in the end? Well, the tunes are undeniable, obs. Uh, so yeah, that's a big factor. And also, they're just so funny, and they're such a good kind of pairing. The two of them, you can't you can't not like them. If you watch the film, I you I defy you to dislike them by the end of it. It's like Laurel and Hardy. It's a bit like that, or the Chuckle Brothers, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And you, as an actress, you get to get do a bit of action in the film as well. I did actually. At one point, there's a huge. I've been kidnapped in the film, and there's a point where I'm kind of trying to get across this road and my dad who directs this film is an action coordinator doesn't mention that he's going to drive a car at me so i'm running across the road and i'm like oh my god there's a car coming at me and he thought like for realism sorry i'm very loud um so i i nearly pooped my pants but i did a very fast run and that's the most important thing <laughs> Crazy concept, this film, isn't it? Oh, Where did it come from, the fruition? <laughs> it just comes from in there, and I don't know how it gets in there. I must be, you know, sort of mixing too many different foods. But uh, no, it's it's just a fun movie. Seriously, it's a fun movie. I think what, what's, what's really nice when, what, when you watch the film is that just the, the chemistry that you see from these two guys that have worked together for countless years, isn't there? Yeah, they, they, they are. That's the whole reason that I, you know, I said to them we should do something, was because when I worked with them the first time back in 2005, they seriously had this kind of buddy chemistry. It's automatic. It's like you can tell they've been together for 50 years because it's, they don't ask, they finish each other's sentences. It's just incredible. So it, it was obvious we, you know, they were, they're like the adult Chuckle Brothers. We actually nicknamed them that on the set because they're just like to me, to you, to me. And it's just magical. Did, did that allow for a lot of like improvisation on set? Well, you know, they say that, but everything was pretty much scripted. They occasionally tried to do a lot of their rhyming slang, slapped them back and said, no one's going to understand what you're talking about. Let's keep it to the script. So, that, you know, there was a compromise. There's a bit of ad lib and then there's, you know, but it's good fun. And, and, you, and you even directed your daughter. What was that like? Yeah, well, it's not the first time. I think I first directed her when she was about six, maybe, in a film called uh, Mystical Christmas. Um, but, yeah, she's, now she's become a bit of a star. It's not so easy. <laughs> And, and finally, the, uh, the the music, of course. You can't do a Quo film without talking about the music. No, absolutely. You know, when I originally wrote the script, I wrote lyrics for songs inside the script because I needed the crew to understand that I needed to film like a 30 seconds, 45 seconds worth of footage to go under what was in my head. So I did write about 12 new songs in the script. And I think at one time, Rick and Francis went, oh, no, no, we don't want anybody writing our songs. Fair enough. But they were just in there to go, it's, it's spacing. It's so people understand. And I don't think they really understood it until they came to Fiji. And after the first day's filming, they went, oh, I can see what you mean now. And then we got into writing new songs. And from them saying, oh, I think you'll just get one song, maybe two new songs, we ended up with a whole album. And we're throwing songs away. So it really did inspire an album. Oh, yeah. Another one bites the dust. 
Oh, no, that's not one of yours. Well, that's it for the Premier Scene for this evening. A status quo, rock around Leicester Square. She's a very best friend when you see it in the hole. She really likes her book, but she loves her rock and roll. You're just telling me you're a tourist. I am a tourist. What are you, CIA? MI5? Uh, no, 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 we've forgotten all that. Oh, my God, I think I'm starting to like them. Awesome!